used to knowing the names and faces on the Spurs. I hate to say it, but you might have to start over, at least to some extent. The team traded veteran shooting guard Jason Richardson to the Pelicans for point guard Devontae Graham and four future second round draft picks. Jay tweeted, very special city fan base always will be special to me. The Spurs now have 23 picks in the next five drafts. And you remember a couple of days ago, Jakob Pertl traded from the Spurs to the Raptors, where his NBA career started back in 2016. The Spurs got center Kim Birch, a top six protected 24 first round pick, plus two future second rounders. And talk about timing. Hey, at least the trade happened in time to allow Pirtle to stay in Toronto and for Birch to actually get on the Spurs charter flight to Detroit. And not a surprise, the Spurs weighs center Dwayne Dedman. He was acquired along with two 2028 20, second round pick from Miami on Tuesday. It's, he's 33 and doesn't fit in the Spurs youth movement, apparently. The Spurs will try to end their 10-game slide tonight when they take on the Detroit Pistons, one of the best arenas in the country because it's Little Caesars Arena. Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes has been named the NFL's most valuable player for the second time. Mahomes received the honor earlier this week for his performance during the 2022 season. He also won the award for the 2018-2019 season. This makes him the 10th player in NFL history to win the award multiple times. The 28-year-old signal caller will play for a second career Super Bowl title coming up Sunday night when the Chiefs take on the Philadelphia Eagles in Super Bowl 57. It makes the third time in five seasons Mahomes has helped take the Chiefs to the Super Bowl. Did I mention he's from Texas Tech? The latest on that Chinese spy balloon that is no more. The Biden administration providing the most comprehensive description of that balloon that traversed across several states last week. Investigators concluding that the balloon was in fact being used for intelligence surveillance. This is lawmakers on Capitol Hill grilled Pentagon officials about why it took so long to shoot it down. ABC's Ike Jachi in Washington with the latest. The Biden administration presenting to the public the extent of China's global surveillance operation. This is a program uh, that has spanned five continents, 40 countries. Last week, the military deployed Cold War era U-2 spy planes to track and study the balloon before it was shot down over the Atlantic Ocean. A newly publicized State Department document says that spy balloon was equipped with multiple antennas capable of collecting communications and enormous solar panels strong enough to power multiple active intelligence collecting sensors, refuting China's claim that it was a civilian weather balloon that had strayed off course. Navy divers specialized in handling explosives continue to scour the waters off South Carolina, searching for possibly dangerous debris from that Chinese spy balloon. On Capitol Hill, Pentagon officials grilled by Democrats and Republicans about why the balloon wasn't shot down when it first crossed into U.S. airspace over Alaska. To me, the clear message to China is we got free range in Alaska. We potentially could have taken it down over the Aleutian Islands. The Pentagon claims it didn't want to shoot it over land in fear of civilian casualties on the ground. They also say downing the balloon over the Aleutian Islands in Alaska could mean diving for debris in waters as deep as 18,000 feet, making recovery and salvage operations dangerous. President Biden defending the decision, saying he doesn't regret shooting it down sooner and that the spy balloon was not a major security breach. <laughs> The total amount of uh, intelligence gathering that's going on by every country around the world is overwhelming. The FBI is examining every single scrap recovered, but today, U.S. officials say they've made a big recovery. They believe they've located the undercarriage, where most of the surveillance equipment is housed largely intact. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. House Oversight Chair James Comer has sent his first official request for documents to President Joe Biden's brother, James, and the president's son, Hunter. His committee is investigating the Biden's family foreign business dealings and whether the Bidens involved President Joe Biden in any of their dealings. It's also investigating whether the family used the Biden name to generate millions of dollars. Comer's request for documents follows requests for information from the Treasury Department about the Biden family's financial transactions. A lawyer for Hunter Biden called the allegations that spurred the investigations, quote, non-existent and far-fetched criminal, criminal conspiracies, end quote. 
The man who carried a large Confederate flag inside the Capitol during the January 6 attack has now been sentenced to three years in prison. Kevin Seifert was part of that mob that chased Capitol Police Officer Eugene Goodman. During the trial, Officer Goodman testified that Seifert jabbed him with the flagpole before and then before handing down his sentence, the district judge told Seifert those actions were, quote, outrageous and egregious and that he participated in a national embarrassment, unquote. In court, Seifried, Seifried apologized to officers for his part in the January 6th event. Seifried's son was with him at the Capitol that day. In October, he was sentenced to two years in prison. You are looking at pictures of long-range nuclear-capable missile test in California. It's called Minuteman 3. Thursday night, the U.S. Space Force launched the unarmed intercontinental ballistic missile from Vandenberg Space Force Base. Authorities at the base say the test focused on the weapon system security, safety, and effectiveness in the U.S. regularly tests its, international, its intercontinental weapon system to verify its accuracy and reliability. It's right on schedule. Neurovirus cases at their highest levels in about a year. According to CDC data, the number of lab tests reporting positive is averaging more than 15 percent. That's a level that we haven't seen since mid-March of last year. Neurovirus is the leading cause of foodborne illness in the U.S. and often involves nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and stomach pain. It spreads easily through personal contact, though contaminated food or water or even contaminated surfaces and it frequently occurs from late fall to early spring. There are millions of cases each year and unfortunately about 900 deaths mostly in older adults. The COVID-19 shot is now on the list of regularly scheduled routine vaccinations for children, teens and adults. That is according to the CDC. The new recommendations were published in the CDC's Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report. Along with the COVID shot, key changes to the schedule include updated guidance on vaccines for the flu, MMR, and hepatitis B. However, this does not mean schools will require vaccination to enroll. Those vaccination requirements are still being determined by state or local jurisdictions and not by the CDC. Taking a look outside with live cam, chilly out there, 52 degrees at noon and the wind. We're hoping it dies down a little bit so we can all get on the Ferris wheel. Yeah, it will die down some, but still howling right now. 52 outside, blue skies starting to show up. I want to show you a picture from this morning. Uh, we had uh, a beautiful sunrise because we had some mid-level clouds working through. Look at that shot. Very, very scenic. We appreciate it as always. Send in those KSAT Connect pictures. You can do that on the KSAT weather app. And as uh, we look at the satellite picture here, you saw a lot of blue skies there at the last look at the airport live cam, and that's because that clearing line more or less is moving through. We still have some clouds back behind that, but these aren't as thick. And so I think we'll get mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies going into the afternoon. A little bit more sun will help with temperatures some, but we're on the back side of that cold front. So highs today will only be in the upper 50s. 56 right now in Honda, 46 in Kerrville, 44 in Fredericksburg. It is cleared out in Rock Springs. You're sitting in 46 and sunny skies out in Del Rio too. 55 for you. 49 Bull Verde, 49 Canyon Lake. 55 in Seguin with a patch of clouds about to work through. And looking at that wind gust forecast for the rest of today, yeah, it's still going to be fairly windy going through, I'd say, uh, late afternoon dinner time, but the winds will drop off tonight. They'll show some gusts up to maybe 15 miles per hour, but sustained winds will be in the 5 to 10 mile per hour range. So look at your forecast one more time. 56 at 3 o'clock, 57 are high, and then down into the 40s tonight. Those temperatures fall off very quickly. We'll be in the low 40s and even 30s by uh, after midnight and then falling down close to freezing by tomorrow morning, guys. What happened this summer? <laughs> it's gone for now. Rihanna is breaking her silence ahead of her big performance at the Super Bowl halftime show Sunday night. How she's preparing and why she decided to take the stage this year after previously turning down the big opportunity. Of course, this Sunday, it's the most anticipated football game of the year, but Super Bowl isn't just for sports fans. Music fans excited to see the halftime show with Rihanna. ABC's Will Reeve with why the singer says now is the right time to take the stage. I am just like Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Work, 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 work. 
work, work. It's work, work, work for Rihanna just days away from her long-awaited return to the stage. Riri, where have you been? Every day it just gets closer and closer to the finished product. The 34-year-old superstar, who's a new mom as of May, turned down the halftime slot in 2019, but says this year is the right time. When you become a mom, there's something that just happens where you feel like you could take on the world, you can do anything, and the Super Bowl is one of the biggest stages in the world. There's something exhilarating about the challenge of it all, and it's important for representation, it's important for my son to see that. She's won nine Grammys and has 14 number one singles. Want you to make me feel like I'm the only girl in the world. I try to my Curating her set list has been the biggest challenge. She says she's on version 39 and counting. So you're trying to cram 17 years of work into 13 <laughs> minutes. It's gonna be a celebration of my catalog in, in the best way that we could have put it together. Rihanna says the jam-packed show has also been a physical challenge and hints it'll weave in elements of Caribbean culture. Representation, representing for immigrants, representing for my country, Barbados, representing for black women everywhere. I, I just, I, I think that's, that's really important. That's key for people to see the possibilities. The newly released short film, Run This Town, highlights her Caribbean roots. But before the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show and before the game, country superstar Chris Stapleton is up first. The national anthem is not an easy song. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I mean, if, if you're going to do it, this is the place to do it. Then Emmy-winning Abbott Elementary star Cheryl Lee Ralph will perform Lift Every Voice and Sing. My favorite line is, till victory is won. <laughs> yeah. 200 million people coming together to sit and experience and hear what a time, what a way to bring us all all together. And a trio of deaf performers, Colin Denny, Justina Miles, and Oscar-winning actor Troy Kotzer, are set to sign the night's musical performances. It's so great to see this diversity representing different types of deaf communities. R&B singer and producer Babyface will sing America the Beautiful, and he has a prediction on who will win the game. I'm gonna go with Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> will Reeve, ABC News, Phoenix, Arizona. That's what's great about the Super Bowl. It's not just the game. It's everything around the it game. Is. Commercial, oh, say it talent. One, say it one more time. Who's the quarterback and where's he from? Patrick Mahomes is oh, a quarterback boy. of the Kansas City Chiefs who spent some time at Texas Tech University. Had a successful career there. Okay. Now look right. at him. We know we, who you're I let him. For. I let him get away with it one more time. <laughs> well, one thing's for sure. We know you won't need an umbrella, Ella, Ella. Oh, oh, nice. Every oh. meteorologist in America is going to use that. Uh, anyway, I want to show you a trans guide real quick. <laughs> Just to show you that things have cleared up. It's all better now. The, the, uh, the roads, the main lanes there on I-10 have opened up. So good news. Traffic should start to return to normal there. Very quickly, the high so far today, 51. The record is 88 since so back in 1954. We won't get there. In fact, we stay below average. Temperature's great this weekend, though. We take a look. Coming up. This Rodeo Remembers, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. In San Antonio, when you think about the rodeo, you also think about the Freeman Coliseum. And both would not be possible without the vision and drive of Joe and Harold Freeman. The brothers grew up working in the family general store, and they were hard workers. By the 1940s, they had grown their family business to include Chevy dealerships, cotton, real estate, and ranching. Around this time, the city and the Freemans realized San Antonio needed a new venue for hosting big events. They quickly became key players in its construction, and the Bear County Coliseum opened to the public in 1949. One reason for their keen interest was the brothers' dream of creating a premier livestock expo for the youth of Texas, and that's exactly what they did. On February 17, 1950, San Antonio held its first annual stock show and rodeo. Through the years, the rodeo has raised over $200 million for Texas youth involved in agriculture. After Joe's death in 1971, the Bear County Coliseum changed its name to the Joe Freeman Coliseum. Then, in 1985, it changed again, and Harry's name was added. So when you're enjoying the rodeo, remember to thank the Freeman Brothers.
Now, you know, the rodeo got started yesterday. What a way to start this year's rodeo. The crowd was huge everywhere you went. I know, but it was also really interesting, the outcome of these events. It was yeah. uh, not the typical day at the rodeo, I'll say. I'm always so impressed with the athletes that are at these yep. uh, events. It, it's just incredible to watch it unfold. And you know who almost won the bull riding? Who's the bulls. That? Oh, they were that good. <laughs> I heard, yeah. So you said there was someone that finished it at like 7.9, right? Yeah, one, right on one, one rider finished it. So the Bulls were like, I guess, what, uh, one in, uh, or nine and one? Nine and one. Right. And, and yeah, the guy took a low score because he was the only one who made it. Yeah, and he sure. said, yep, I'll take yeah. it. Uh, incredible to watch. And yeah, the rodeo will be crowded today, even though it is a little bit windy. And I know it will be crowded this weekend because temperatures are shaping up to be pretty nice. 37 was the peak wind gust so far today here in San Antonio. Uh, we've seen that. Uh, we saw it much earlier this morning and then right around rush hour winds really picked up. Gusts around 36 in Hondo, gusting at 35 in Bernie. I mean, it's pretty consistent, right? Uh, gusts 35 to 40. Now these winds are trying to calm down some. And I think as we get into the afternoon, you'll see them slowly ease up. But it's going to take until tonight that you, before you really see these numbers fall off. And yeah, we may get some gusts up around 15 miles per hour tonight, but the winds will be more in the 5 to 10 mile per hour range. One thing that does, though, once you lose the wind, it doesn't stir up the atmosphere. And when we lose the clouds, you get perfect radiational cooling. And that means we're going to get a very chilly morning coming up tomorrow. Uh, here's a look at the cloud cover really starting to fade here and move out. So that clearing line is working its way through San Antonio. There are a few clouds behind this, but these are already starting to kind of dissipate. So I think we'll see plenty of sun going throughout the rest of the afternoon. 48 in Kerrville, 56 in Hondo, 59 Creases of Springs, one of the warm spots, 60 in Catula and around Bear County. We're right there in the low 50s right now, trying, trying to warm up. And where we're seeing a little bit more sun, the temperatures are popping up some. We've noticed that in Hell Lotus and Rio Medina up into the mid 50s now. You can see that cloud deck nicely here on our live cam moving to the south and moving away. 51, as we said, dew point is falling at 33 and north northwesterly winds sustained at 14. Most of the state is within this cool air mass. 44 Dallas, 39 Wichita Falls, 35 Amarillo, even Brownsville. That front has cleared you and temperatures are in the mid 50s there. So it's kind of a chilly day across the Lone Star State and really across a large portion of the country. This is the storm system that is moving away, still producing some very light snow in Oklahoma and some rain across parts of Arkansas and then bringing in some pretty heavy showers and storms around New Orleans. But this is all moving east of us and moving away. And that's where most of the active weather is right there along the Gulf Coast today. Otherwise, the whole western half of the country is quiet. Uh, not much going on, at least not at the moment. So what do our temperatures look like going forward? I think by this afternoon, again, we get up to around 57 or so. You will see 60s to the south, some cooler numbers to the north in the hill country. And then tonight is when things get chilly. 32 here in San Antonio. So I think a fairly widespread light freeze here around town. A Fair Oaks Ranch for sure. I think you're below freezing. Bernie, same story. Kerrville will be 29. The forecast low there, maybe even a degree or two cooler. Same in Bandera, Hondo, Castroville, Divine, all these areas looking at the potential for a light freeze. Then as we get into tomorrow, we make it up to 61 for a high. Really nice on your Saturday, sunny skies. And then by Sunday, we'll start to see some increase in clouds. And then here comes our next storm system. This is set to arrive Monday night into Tuesday. As I said earlier, the window to see rain with this is really pretty small. We're talking overnight, Monday night into Tuesday while you're sleeping. I think by the time you wake up on Tuesday, this rain will be out of here. And I don't know that we'll pick up a, a much just because it's so quick moving, but 40% chance there. And then by Tuesday, we're clearing out. Valentine's Day will be a little bit breezy, but nice. And as we look at the extended forecast, again, 60s over the weekend, 66 Monday, mostly cloudy, a little windy, 40% chance of storms. Uh, that ends Tuesday morning, 74 for Valentine's Day, and then up to 80. I think it, we could even be a little bit warmer than that on Wednesday, one of our warmest days. And then another front comes through that cools us down Thursday, back down into the 50s with windy conditions, guys. We'll be right we'll back. Be, and Thanks, we'll be Justin. right back. <laughs> You know, it's Friday, so you know what that means. Food and fun. Yep, and they're doing all that at SA Live Downtown. Oh, wow, oh. look at that. 
<laughs> what new, did the hair do? New weed surprise, yeah. <laughs> yes. The alpacas are packing a party. Yep, Absolutely. That's Stan and Declan, <laughs> by the way. And along with them, they brought Travis and Yusei McManus from the Black Barn Alpacas. And beautiful animals prized for their fur, right? Yeah, the Incas used to, valuable their, uh, used to uh, value their fleece more valuable than gold. Wow. Valuable and you said it's gold. like one of the, the softest that you can get anywhere in the world, right? Softest, strongest, um, most durable, antimicrobial. And we're going to let you know how you can maybe uh, pay him a little visit coming up fun Valentine weekend. Uh, yes, and if you want to get the party started before the big game there on Sunday, oh yes. Chef Brandon Peterson from Summer Camp is here. All right, you got to smash a burger on the grill. Got to smash a burger on the grill. Quick little tip. You want to keep your spatula from sticking to the burger. And that's parchment paper. Parchment paper. And just give it a good, good mush down like that. So, all right, new burger place in town, and it is rated as one of the best burgers in town. Yes, and Jen, of course, is going to show you a happy space. Yep, perfect. Uh, if you're getting ready for the big game this weekend, speaking of which, who do you think is going to win this weekend? Ooh, yeah. let mm. us know. We'll let you know. Valentine's coming up. Something for the guys. Those are beef jerky roses. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead and take a bite. I'm going to. <laughs> I can't, I can't. Anyway, there we there go. You know. <laughs>